Okay, uh, Nikon has just announced uh, their new camera and I just think you have to be an absolute fool to be going, I want to go buy that now. The camera that's come out is the Nikon One Series V3. Uh, the V version were considered their, they had the V and the J, and I think they brought out another one at one point as well. Nobody's really paid too much attention to these cameras because they're just not really grabbing anybody's attention in the market at all. Um, some people bought them, I'm sure somebody will put a comment saying, I bought it, it's amazing, and I'm not dis dis disputing that. I'm not disputing that uh, you may get great photos or it's very versatile or it's a great camera. But what I am saying is that you'd be an absolute fool to see this new camera coming out and going, I've got to buy it now. Because the price is looking painful. It's, uh, currently, I can only see it on the uh, .com sites, the American sites, and it's given it in dollar form. And uh, although it's coming with some fluff around the side, like a, another hand grip, a viewfinder, um, and a lens, it's around about $1,200. And in the UK, that will probably still be £1,200 for what is effectively a point and shoot with some new little funky lenses, but with limited availability and, uh, and interconnectivity. So oh, and when I mean that, it's not that you can go, oh, somebody's got the V2, oh, you, can I use your battery? Because they can't even uh, share batteries or anything like that. Um, so it's just, just a bit of a normal. It is updated, it's got a bigger sensor, it's, uh, no it doesn't have a bigger sensor, it's the same size sensor but more megapixels on it uh, and it's got faster things inside it so it, it may have some functions which you may think are very good however what I would say is just do not even think about buying it just now. The, the camera companies generally after a while, drop drop prices. Uh, they, they usually you know start high, then go down low once the camera has been uh, out for a while. But the, the Nikon One series are phenomenal at dropping. I've uh, just been checking Amazon. Uh, uh, well, the best one was the Sigma was the biggest drop. But uh, Amazon UK. So whenever the V1 first came out, that was eight hundred and thirty pounds. And now, I'm seeing on Amazon just now, and that was in 2011, but now it's £281. In fact, and I'm seeing a version here down to £250. So that is uh, less than a third of the original price. So um, this is definitely, it just plummeted so quickly and effectively they're just giving it away at that price. A few people have made comments on, if you go to nikonrumors.com, it's quite interesting if you read people's comments on it, uh, and quite a few people are saying, "What two one thousand two hundred dollars for what is a five hundred dollar camera?" And it kind of really is that. Okay, it's got a couple of new little features in it, but uh, at the moment, I would say it's not something to be rush rushing out and uh, ordering straight away. The biggest example, the best example, was uh, you'll see just now the Sigma SD one mirror uh, is now currently. £799. You think, okay, that's, that's still a decent camera. And you're thinking, oh, it's dropped from 1839 Not quite so, because when it originally came out, does it, wait, does it say when this, does it say when this one, uh, when this advert was put on? When it originally came out, £5,000. £5,143. Oh, oh, the pain of thinking somebody bought it at that price and now you can buy it at that price. And yeah, it's the same camera, no difference. Oh, oh, that's, that's got to sting a little bit. And I would say, again, if, if you're a photographer or something like that and you need a small little camera, get the Nikon V1 or the V2, I think, hold on. I haven't got the V2, but the V2 is around about 500 pounds. Uh, and, uh, and that's with a lens and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, I, I think a lot of these companies now milk uh, the the brand brand fans. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, fanboys. That's what it is. Uh, so in other words, if you a, a bit like what Apple does, but the good thing about Apple, or, or the interesting thing about Apple, is that it doesn't really drop its price. So it will come out with the new 
iPhone 5S and it will come out at £600. Two years later, it will still be for sale and it'll be, instead of £500, it'll be £450. So it's not like somebody will buy it at the very start and then after two years of going, oh man, I wasted so much money on this thing which nobody uses anymore. But with, so, so that's the good thing about something like Apple. But with Nikon, or not, not necessarily Nikon, but with camera companies, it really seems to be the case of if you buy it when it first comes out, oh, you're, you're just really throwing money away. And it's more in the consumer enthusiast area. So in other words, if you buy a pro camera, if you look at the Nikon D3X, that's still £4,000. So anybody that bought that when that first came out, they probably haven't lost that much at all uh, whenever they, they bought it, or at least if they're going to sell it, they can sell it for very close to the same price. So the high-end professional end doesn't really change, but it's the chunky area of where you'd get fanboyism that I think in the first month, two months, six months, they just kind of go, let's just see how much we can get out of this, and they just rack the price up as high as possible. Uh, and then people are just going, oh yeah, I've got to get the newest and latest. And then after about six months, I just go, right, let's bring it down to where it actually should be, which is just about half the price. Oh, but this one, I actually had a little bit of a burst out laughing whenever I saw that it was $1,200, which once it comes into the, I just checked the UK site, definitely doesn't have it yet. No, no nothing, nothing yet. But uh, yeah, just, just don't.